Hi, my name's Kim. I'm a licensed and nationally certified East Asian medical provider. And I deal with a lot of COVID, pretty much all things COVID from vaccine injury to long haulers to COVID. And so what that means for me is I do a lot of research on what's happening in Western science and this virus. So there's a person, and I don't know if you've actually heard of him yet, but there's this Dr. Gert van den Bosch. He's out of the Netherlands. He's worked his whole life or most of his life in vaccine development. He actually worked at the Gates Foundation. He was one of the scientists who spoke out on the polio vaccine campaign. He said that that campaign was likely to create another a strain of polio, which it ultimately did. So he has, oh, he also worked on the vaccine for the Ebola. So he has a lot of background and he has a lot of technical knowledge and experience. And so he's been talking about the mRNA vaccines, which are the COVID vaccines and how they have impacted our system and where he sees that there's a danger in them. And I was kind of curious what he had to say. He's not the only virologist or scientist who's been saying, hey, you shouldn't vaccinate during a pandemic because you encourage the virus to change as it struggles to escape our immune system. But he is one of the scientists who studies viruses, who's been creating vaccines, and who's super well respected in this area. And why I started looking at what he was saying is because he's kind of prophesizing this mass die-off event that he thinks could start happening as soon as December of this year. So I thought, wow, what is he saying and how is he looking at this? And, you know, we've been talking a lot about excess deaths. And I thought he was coming at this from the concept of excess deaths, where something's damaged our immune system, and now we're more susceptible to any disease out there, especially things like cancers and heart disease. And I talk about excess deaths in my episode, The Silent Crisis and Increasing Mortality in Younger Adults. There's a link here up here but there's going to be a link for it in the video description below if you want to look at that so let me just say a couple things because part of this will tie into this video so before the pandemic our average death rate per hundred thousand people was 715 and now let's look at what it is in 2023 because they thought that the excess death rates would start to go down they haven't so in 2023, this is the 12 month average for 2023, it's 924 people. So that's 30% higher than before the pandemic. And I'm sorry, but you can't just say that's all about older people dying. I wanted to highlight one more thing in this report. Now these excess deaths are not from COVID because we know we don't have deaths happening from COVID. There's so very few of them. So these 30% higher deaths are happening from something else. And that's what I thought Dr. Van de Bosch was going to say was going to be the problem. But that's not. Okay, so here's the top line. That's Those are rolling 12-month averages. Below that, that number represents the average of the three months of that quarter. So let's look at these, the third and the fourth quarter for 2023. Notice that you see a sudden jump up in the fourth quarter of 2023. That, I think, starts to talk to what Dr. Van de Bosch has been saying. That quarter where we see the sudden jump in average death rates, that's the time when the JN1 variant came into the United States. So that's the variant that Dr. Van de Bosch is super upset about. Let me take you through the Cliff Notes version of what Dr. Van de Bosch is saying so you can see why he thinks that variant is a problem. So I thought he was saying, based on the excess deaths being so high, I thought he was saying that the COVID-19 vaccine damaged our immune system, making us more susceptible to all these other diseases like cancer, like heart disease. That is not what he's saying. 
He is saying that the COVID-19 vaccines have damaged our immune system to the point where if this COVID-19 virus mutates in a really specific way, our body will not be able to mount a defense against it. Okay, do, do we have to worry about that? That's, this is what I was going through my head. Well, now, Gert van de Bosch, he actually has a book on his concerns, and you can find it on Amazon. So I'm going to put a link in the video description below. It's an associate's link. So if you purchase off of that link, the channel's going to get a few pennies. And thank you very much. So I went through this book. I went through some of his inter interviews. And... Here's what he's saying. He's saying that the technology in the COVID vaccines is poorly understood. And because it's poorly understood, guess what? It caused damage to the immune system of individuals who've been vaccinated. So what's that damage? Well, he's saying the COVID vaccines implemented something called steric immune refocusing. So that's really going to be the only technical word that I'm using, but I couldn't think of anything else to use. And you're saying the same thing that I was saying is, what is that? So let me give you an example. You have this virus like SARS-CoV-2 with its spike protein, and it's constantly changing, right? It has all these mutations. It's mutating every month. What the scientists think is that there's something within the virus that's going to have some sort of consistency across all all the virus variants. And if we could just make a vaccine that addresses that one thing that stays consistent, well, maybe by default, we could address all the variants, right? And that sounds like this great thing. So immune refocusing, us telling our immune system to refocus on something specific. I'm going to put a link below to a research paper that was just published in April of 2024 on immune focusing and the problems with immune focusing. It actually turns out that we don't know much about immune focusing and it doesn't really work. We, we know that it happens. We don't know how the body does it and we haven't been really able to replicate it. But it looks like it's happening with these mRNA vaccines. And how it's happening is it's, it's creating antibodies. You know how they go, oh, look at all the high antibody levels that we have. So that just proves this vaccine's working really well. And the problem with those antibodies, because, you know, nothing comes for free. Uh, so far, we've never been able to do anything in science and get it for free. There's actually appears to be a cost with this. The cost is that those antibodies, there are a couple things. They're the first line of defense, which is such a very small aspect of our immune system. They don't have memory, so they don't start kicking off the rest of the immune system. We really just get stuck in this first line of defense, which is a very, very small part of our immune system. And it's been okay, right? It's been okay because it's created so many antibodies that even though these are really weak antibodies, so many of them have been attacking the virus that it's still been able to be effective and to um, stop the virus from creating significant damage. But every once in a while, the virus is going to win and it's going to be able to break through these weak bonds. And because there's nothing behind these weak bonds, there's no other aspect of our immune system. It's going to create a new variant. Wow, huh? Well, now we know how that's happening. So we looked at the mortality rates for the third quarter of 2023, and we saw that they spiked up, right? Well, that's when the JN1 variant came in. And what Dr. Van Bosch is saying is this JN1 variant is a result of this vaccine-induced mutation. And by the way, that's a huge problem. Okay, so... 
kind of getting it now. The vaccines, they changed how our immune system is fighting COVID-19. Our immune systems are only using the first line of defense, which is what? Probably like 5% of our immune system. It's been effective because so many antibodies had been triggered by the vaccine. So he's saying that these COVID-19 vaccines, they're not only using an mRNA technology that's not well understood, but they based the mRNA technology on a spike protein that is very variable that they thought would be consistent in all variants. Okay, let me, let me talk to you about this in a different way. Let's call this thing that's consistent across all variants a foundation, like the foundation of a house. So all houses have foundations. What the JN1 variant did was change that. So I think what he's saying is that the vaccines put so much pressure on the foundation of this house, this virus's foundation, that the virus decided it wasn't going to build houses anymore. It was going to build a boat. Ah, okay. So that's completely different. And he's saying that because it built something completely different, that from here forward, this technology won't work anymore because it's based on building a house. It's based on the foundation for a house. The mRNA technology, the mRNA boosters, they don't know how to build a boat. So he's saying that all boosters from here forward, they're not going to work against SARS-CoV-2. Wow. Okay. That truly sucks. Let's just stop taking these vaccines. Well, okay. He's saying, yeah, you can stop taking the vaccines, but because... Big Pharma really didn't understand immune refocusing when they were playing with this technology. They didn't realize it was changing our immune system kind of like permanently. And it was changing our immune system response to the COVID-19 virus. And this is a problem for those of us who have been vaccinated. You know, there's a lot of discussion that if you got COVID before you got vaccinated, better for you. Not great, but better for you. But if you got vaccinated before you got COVID, could be worse. So our immune response is not going through its normal process of, you know, uh, pulling in more B cells, pulling in T helper cells, creating immune system memory, all of this stuff that we need to really fight off infections and reinfections. Instead, it's kind of hampered our immune response where it stops at the first step. And he thinks that it's crippled the response that now that the virus is creating this boat, that boat can come into our system and create this massive infection and death. And, and here's the thing. He thinks that's going to happen as soon as December 2024. From what I've seen in clinic, I think Dr. Vandebosch, he's correct that this virus has changed because I noticed it in clinic. And especially with this flirt variant that started circulating in April, that variant is completely different from anything I've seen or addressed previously. And I'll hear it even from my clients who have gotten flirt. They say it feels totally different. They've never felt this before. And it feels pretty much horrible, even if they're getting a mild case. What I noticed with, well, starting in about October of last year, October of last year, I had to make a slight change to the formulas that I was using to address the initial infection. But with FLIRT, I had to completely change the formulas that I was using to address the initial infection uh, from this new variant. And we're still playing with that a little bit because there also seems to be variability by individual. So this thing 
has a tremendous amount of flexibility. So what it's doing is, yeah, your immune system's responding differently, but that response is even magnified by the differences in each individual. So, so it's kind of a different thing, but what it suggests is that the holes in the immune system that need to be plugged or supported, they've changed. And now the immune system needs something completely different from Mother Nature in order to kick this thing out. That's the Cliff, Cliff Notes version. Here's the thing. When you look at Western science versus Eastern Asian medicine, to help you understand the differences, science is going to be looking at this from a biochemical process. Whereas East Asian medicine is going to be looking at it from a bioorganic perspective. So this bioorganic perspective, in my mind, it's what is the body missing and where does the immune system need to be shored up? Now, just for, just for you to understand, I have put together a book on what I've been doing in clinic and all the different ways that we've been addressing long haulers vaccine injury not the actual initial infection but for those of you who are like chronically sick some of the things that we've been doing to address that from a chinese medical perspective or east asian medical and i hope to have that out within the next couple weeks you, you'll be able to find it on amazon and when i get that out there i'll put a link to that so if you're curious on is there a bioorganic method of handling this? Well, that might be a, a starter. I do think you're going to have to work with somebody who understands East Asian herbs. I, this will give you a really good direction, but I think as you start mixing the formulas in that, if you work with an East Asian herbologist, I think you're going to get the biggest benefit from that. So anyways, I've always been worried about this SARS-CoV-2 and what it's doing and how it keeps on mutating. It's just so bizarre. I've spent the last four years studying and working with the different expressions of this virus from this bio-organic perspective. And you know what? I don't know where this whole thing is going to play out, but until next time, I'll catch you on the other side.